Got you it. see those features? Ah. Yes, yes, started. So, uh, may I request uh, everyone else to mute their mics because otherwise there tends to be a lot of ambient sound. So, I, you know, um, I just like to introduce uh, the evening's proceedings. Uh, we have with us today uh, Sharad, who's going to introduce his book to us. Uh, this is part of the Jawaharlal Nehru University Teachers Association Outreach Program. Uh, and uh, Bhura, which has been received very warmly across, uh, you know, Maharashtra. Uh, this is a way of introducing the book to a new linguistic audience, perhaps. And hopefully this book will be translated in the future. Uh, we have with us uh, three discussants uh, who will give their views on the work. And I request you to uh, maybe speak for about 15 minutes each on uh, the book. And then we will follow it up with uh, Sharad uh, telling us about how this book uh, came to be. And we'll also then take uh, questions uh, from the audience. Uh, we have with us uh, a very eminent uh, uh, novelist and writer, uh, Ranganath uh, Pathare, uh, who is a recipient of the recently awarded uh, Vinda Karandika Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, he's written several novels, among them uh, Tamra Pat was awarded the Saitya Academy Award in 1999. And his uh, recent book, uh, Sat, uh, Sat Patil Kul, uh, Kul Vrutant, has been widely acclaimed for its insights into the cultural practices of various sects in Maharashtra. Uh, Dr. Alone is my colleague from the School of Arts and Aesthetics. Uh, he teaches uh, courses on uh, Buddhist visual culture. Uh, he specializes um, in, you know, the Buddhist caves of uh, the Deccan region, uh, but he also teaches courses on neo-Buddhist visual culture. He's written extensively on uh, modernist practices uh, using uh, Ambedkarite uh, points of view. And he has been nominated as the ICCR chair uh, and as a visiting professor in Shenzhen University in China. And he's also, of course, lectured widely in India and abroad. Uh, we have also Pradeep uh, Shinde. Dr. Pradeep Shinde is an assistant professor of sociology in the Center for Informal Sector and Labor Studies in JNU. And his interests lie in categories such as work and mobility, labor, and denotified tribes. He has also been a Ford Foundation International Fellow. Uh, he has uh, taught uh, in uh, various university programs across the, uh, you know, in Germany and in uh, uh, also had a teaching fellowship at uh, Humboldt and Castle in Germany. And he did his PhD from the London School of Economics in 2005. And so um, all the three discussants have not read the book and they have interesting insights to offer to us. So I'd like to first invite Sri Ranganath Patare to give his views, uh, followed by uh, Dr. Aloni and then Pradeep. So over to you, uh, Patare ji. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh... Actually, I'm extremely happy to be a part of uh, this uh, uh, select gathering of intellects, intellectuals. Can you, can, will you please reverse your camera? This way? Uh -huh. yeah. uh, I shall look to it. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, is it okay now? Yes, yes. So essentially, I no, I really don't love autobiographies. So whenever I come across autobiographies, I tend to uh, look into pages randomly and uh, try to see if uh, uh, I get a kind of connection, which is normally necessary for a good reading. But as far as this book is concerned, I started reading and immediately I got engrossed into it. I started asking myself, 
why 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 what is this happening why this is happening uh i think it's a, essentially uh autobiography has always a scope for a kind of self defense self glorification but here the author doesn't glorify himself he simply states the facts a kind of uh, in a kind of sorry uh, in the kind of what what should i say uh, alienated uh, sort of manner and uh, uh, well essentially this is a miracle for a man for a boy in a remote village in maharashtra who fails in 10th standard in english and then goes on to become uh, i mean goes on to uh, do his phd in french philosophy or philosophy but it's not merely this i think as far as this work is concerned the way he gets up from the ditches and makes himself stronger or understand this understands the strength within him a kind of iron in the soul uh, he sees within himself and goes further or other proceeds further and uh, is not merely an exemplary journey see it is the depth of understanding of the writer uh, is simply i mean outstanding see he, he makes things so simple you know or rather he writes everything in a very uh, apparently in a very simpler manner but it is one can understand by while reading that the writer has understood life much better than the any any uh, uh, say anybody else for example he says that a democracy can be can become a reality in the people or in society only with democratization of education and the education becomes democratic only when it is imparted in the local languages we, we, we in india we claim ourselves to be a democracy and the educational system uh doesn't uh, uh, allow any room for your local languages actually uh, and uh, therefore a true democracy is difficult uh, to take a root here despite uh, we ourselves stating that we are a true democracy and 70 years has have elapsed and we are now a proven uh, democracy biggest democracy in the world and so on the other thing is as i have said the uh, iron in the soul you go you experience the extreme of sort of difficulties in life but you overcome them you ride over them and get a strength out of it or realize your inner strength this realization of inner strength to me is something which is extremely important something which is remarkable and something uh, which has struck me a lot uh, which has which has uh, made me think myself realize uh, myself or go go back to my childhood my uh, learning and uh, so many things else and see the, the total book is extremely captivating you, you just can't uh, keep it away and uh, 
it's a it's an important reading and i i don't uh, read this type of work in so many years in the recent past so to me uh, this is extremely important uh, sort of uh, writing and many much more is definitely will rather will definitely come from this writer uh, i have all the good wishes for him thank you thank you uh, so we will of course continue with perhaps uh, more questions from you to uh, sharad later but uh, aloni uh, we'd like to hear from you about the book now you need to unmute yourself aloni uh, thank you shikla and uh, thanks jnu ta for organizing this and also giving me an opportunity to, to speak on sharad sharad's book uh, well let me first congratulate sharad for such a such a wonderful uh, autobiography uh, having said that i would like to put it in the context you see uh, in jnu the first faculty to write his own autobiography in a very small manner that became part of a chapter in the book Uh, which was edited by sujil kapka so that was professor s k thora then came the second full fledged biography by uh, professor tulsira uh, which ran into two volumes and the third volume he could not complete because by then he expired and now we have a young faculty uh, in jnu who has produced his own autobiography and let me tell you very 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 clearly you know it's it is not a retros, retrospection alone but it goes with the self introspection and this is very important in every respect if you read his each and every para and even the the uh, the, the events he has described and also the conditionality of his own time you will find that everywhere there is this element of self introspection and that that self introspection is so huge and enormous in in his uh, in 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 every chapter that you feel yes there is this whole element of philosophical correctness and as well as political correctness and how he goes on differentiating between the philosophical correctness and the uh, political correctness it's very fabulous i i don't see generally people distinguishing uh, separating the two factors and also making their own intervention through through their own uh, uh, life journey uh, of course sharad is not the first one to write write his autobiography there are plenty of autobiographies written in uh, in marathi and of course there are plenty of uh, dalit autobiographies and they are, they are just fabulous which has changed the tone of the language the whole aspect of the marathi gets challenged by the dalit literary narratives and this is how one has to see the development of the language and also the ways in which certain signifiers are used so so sharad going on that line you will notice that he deviates and he deviates because because of his training because he's trained as a as a language expert so you will find number of nuances say for example you will find the philosophical terms you will come across with certain french terms you will come across with some english terms you will come across with local terms then of course marathi terms as well as irony now irony it 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 goes everywhere i mean every now and then it's not that he only sticks to irony but irony comes as a part of his looking back the, the back his life and then bringing in in bringing in that particular aspect uh, uh, aspect of life so so this is this is very very uh, uh, this is the most important uh, 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 important aspect of his uh, of his autobiography then the other inter- important thing is that uh, uh, the 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 ways in which he starts his journey and and he makes it very clear that i being a being born in kunbi family i have not faced the caste and gender discrimination in my life he makes it very clear 
but he does face the 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 uh, uh, the, the the poverty uh, and the struggle he had to do uh, for his education for his uh, quest to learn something i mean it it is always a challenging thing you know i i, I can recall my own incident one small incident i i was uh, someone in the staff room and one of my teacher who was teaching us history of art and said that alone you please don't write in uh, don't take english medium uh, you don't know how to write english so so i my my candid reply was that madam at least i know abcd so 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 i can i can see that that quest and and of course i went on doing specialization in history of art and writing in history of art now that's a different thing but sharat took that challenge so seriously and made a life out of it and everywhere like you face challenges and you come with the solution so so every now and then his struggleful life is a is a mirror to the to the academic world that a person coming from such a hard life can achieve those things can make marks and can also create a world of its own it is very significant because there are number of people at least in maharashtra i can say that people get afraid of english and he makes it very clear that 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 english manje manje gyan and gyan manje ingreji that english means knowledge and knowledge means english this has been a saying where we we have been hearing this since our childhood so i am sure sharad of course is not a first person to hear that and he he realizes that there are people who have realized and and went on making their life accordingly and they progressed a lot otherwise in marathi like amchi marathi amchi marathi by by doing this kind of amchi marathi syndrome we have not taken maharash maharashtrians anywhere and it is only only a certain section of the community which are sitting in california or new york and and if you if you when 911 happen you just see the number of international i a st isd calls made from india from which place and from which community so even that also you can see how how us, there there is this whole idea of hegemony that goes in the every every life every every sphere of life inter including internationalizing oneself and and sharad is is making that break it's very significant and 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 that is why i say that this autobiography is another landmark in the in the in the marathi literary world so so you have a fabulous like anybody wants to know the how the french words are pronounced i mean i myself first time learned uh, uh, read french while re reading the manifestos uh, of cubism and all, and and all those modern movements and it was so difficult to comprehend but nevertheless it was a first time experience similarly while while reading uh, renaissance and baroque you come across with so many italian terms so these are the kind of an exposures we got and and i can i can really see how he struggled and how he mastered mastered everything and and another important thing is that 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 a person who comes from marathi marathi language can understand can can very well very well also learn how to how to how to make french pronunciations rightly how to how to make english pronunciations rightly and he has painted it so beautifully so beautifully now what one what, what another important find like uh, some, some of the uh, regular sayings which which one can one can say say for example aaj katliyam ho gaya like the uh, the, the scot comes and and raids the raids the center and and that that has been very much part and parcel of the examination system but hardly we get get a narrative of this kind i i uh, Uh, and and it is it is across india it is not just maharashtra but it is across india this this kind of practices are still there and how like uh, we do have the terms like copy badu badur and all those things so all all those things are are very much embedded uh, embedded in his uh, in his narrative then the the, uh, uh, the some of the some of the terms he has used are really fascinating say for example in order to describe how 
the uh, the cow dis disappears so he uses a very sophisticated language and and a very satirical language also swachha abhiyan so so the the because this idea of swachha abhiyan these days is so so much deeply entrenched politically in our mind and we suddenly recall as to whom he is really addressing to this kind of a swachha abhiyan and that to his own own cow so 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 the the cow which belongs to his family belongs to him and that goes uh, and and that suddenly di di disappears and then uh, 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 the the uh, another like uh, his his quest to learn english and from english he his journey to french is something very fabulous i mean you cannot imagine that a boy coming from dhule learning french on himself himself learning french himself and also mastering the language simultaneously without having a french degree and how he was forbidden to attend the french classes in lucknow so he took it as a challenge and and i find very few people in my own academic life coming from the uh, uh, the Uh, uh the uh, the the uh, oppressed uh, section of the society taking up that kind of a challenge and this 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 taking on this challenge is so important in that person's life that it gives him or her a very different perspective of life and note it very clearly that you know he makes it very clear that i i that he was not fascinated by tilak and all these people but he finds solas in the writings of mahatma jyotibha phule and baba saheb ambedkar very i mean this is just a few things he read in his childhood but his own consciousness is so so much uh, uh, reactive to 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 its impact that it 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 very much remain in his mind and then how his mother plays an important role in his life every time you will observe that he brings back his mother in the narrative it's very fascinating to see how he brings back his mother in every now and then and and the mother continues in the entire narrative in till till the end though i mean i will not speak on on the uh, 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 the, the time after he comes to jain you i'm sure other people will uh, will talk about it <coughs> but uh, but his result you know he writes French la sudda gherai cha hai. So, so you have to encircle the language. I mean, that's a like you have to attack the language. You have to capture it. So, this whole idea of capturing a language is quite quite a fascinating idea because generally we being we being Marathi, you know, we are so much into our Marathi syndrome that we don't really try to understand. it's a different thing that ambedkarite section of the indian society is open for english learning other things but the same kind of a consciousness does not uh, 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 there uh, uh, in the uh, in the other section of the society now when it comes to the like uh, the the the, the kunvi section of the india of the of the maharashtrian society you will notice that with the rise of some of those social movements within the within the uh, communities it has given a new new uh, consciousness and and there is a there, there is a there is a you know uh, requestioning of everything and this process of requestioning in sharad's work is quite different now you will not really see i mean you will not really understand like directly understand that what actually he is questioning what kind of a nithas he is questioning so so this this questioning process it goes very much simultaneously with the uh, with the narrative and that is why i say that it is this introspection element of introspection that every time every time goes and then like uh you have certain philosophical terms like sto uh, stoicism and and so on and so forth so so you can understand how he is using his disciplinary paradigms to narrate his own life and it's an it's an eye opener it's an eye opener for others and and at the end i would like to uh, uh, we will we will uh, uh, 
uh, we will uh, we, we may have certain uh, 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 discussion around uh, if the time permits but but at the end i would also like to uh, uh, i would like to say this that uh, you know this this when when he writes that country of known and unknown words it's quite a fascinating thing to to uh, to map one's journey uh, into this known and unknown words and how a person who wants to learn english so uh, whenever we study english we always used to make underline the 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 uh, the words which we don't know and and then you go and search for a meaning in the dictionary now now sharat plays a reverse order so which is which is quite a fascinating thing and 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 this is something uh, uh, i mean I, i at least i cannot i i couldn't think on those lines ever because that was a common practice we we always had and sharat goes by the reverse order like the words which are unknown to him so you just don't mark them under like only known which you mark and then he comes to know how much he knows and then how much he doesn't know so so this kind of an exercise and then uh, uh like any any other person who wishes to learn language you know by hearting dictionary is such a mega challenge and he has i mean he has by hearted those dictionaries it's quite fascinating i mean you you need to accept these kind of challenges and these kind of challenges come when you get conscious about yourself about your society about your culture and uh, uh, and, and and how uh, one gets uh, so much uh, attracted because due to to the writings of uh, jyotiba phule and and and, and dr ambedkar and and finally when he comes to jnu who makes a fantastic critic that all the left people they were shouting slogan of uh, uh, either ekla chalo and we shall win we shall this thing and that thing and also there are some french slogans which which which, uh, which they the, the left left group points and he finds himself alienated from that and there he see, he observes that how because for him phule and ambedkar are the real the real personas in the life of the indians who really espouse to make transformation in the society and this transformative politics is very important what one notices in the autobiographical writings of marathi is that like you begin with your raw language and when you come to the urban you you there is there is this sense of sophistication that goes this is this has been a this has been a main trend and that is why like biography of you know, lakshman mane or or gaekwad and all they are all very fascinating account and 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 uh, that completely defies the logic of what what you understand as marathi in similarly in sharath's case he begins with a very standardized marathi and then goes into irony all the time so there is there is always that irony that goes like how my mother would have said what my mother said and and how uh, how it it would it would recall certain incidents in his life and then uh, narrate those things so it keeps keeps in between so there is always this element of back and forth that 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 constantly goes on so i'm sure we will have more questions or anything and i will be glad to answer those things thank you and 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 we'll be happy to have sharad uh, to uh, to uh, they respond to our uh, our observations thank you thank you so much for that uh, clearly you know this is a book that speaks to many of us in the university and uh, pradeep if you have uh, you know uh, i'm you know you read the book and so we welcome you to present your views on the book okay um <clears throat> thank you um uh, this is uh, this is a fantastic um, um occasion to discuss sharath book which is uh, which is fascinating uh i um i really got engrossed while reading i i share uh, uh, professor patare's uh, appreciation and uh, you know uh, understand uh, the kind of richness that uh, exists in his narrative uh, uh, another important thing is that uh, i am appreciating this book i found it extremely fascinating not because i come from the same region um, uh, a villages i think uh, 
not very far from each other, I think six or seven kilometers. Um, Ravi is from about uh, six kilometers from my village. And um, the landscape um, that he talks about, uh, so interestingly, um, uh, uh, I've, I've seen, I've seen, and I also um, draw a lot of parallels from the narrative that is presented to us. Um, we more or less share the same uh, uh, social background. Uh, uh, although I didn't have a land, uh, didn't have land, uh, Sharad had, uh, but the land also didn't uh, uh, help him to, uh, to, to kind of, you know, um, um, to provide him a um, solid uh, upbringing uh, and the kind of struggle that he had. There are lots of similarities between um, um, what I went through and what Sharad uh, went through. Uh, my appreciation doesn't really, appreciation doesn't really come from that, that landscape, that geographical region that we share, uh, but it is, it's contained, which I, um, uh, which I found extremely uh, powerfully presented. Uh, most importantly, I'll come to the, um, uh, the, the, the content part later, but, uh, um, but it's presentation, it's writing style. You know, it's extremely easily accessible. And, uh, um, uh, and uh, is, uh, I think he has very consciously contributed uh, a couple of words from Khandesh region uh, to the uh, corpus of Marathi language. And I think it's a very interesting, um, if he's consciously decided to contribute these words to the, um, to, 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 to Marathi language, uh, I think it's, it, it's, it's I, it, took, it, it should be recognized as a contribution. Because, you know, uh, language uh, is, um, we often attribute everything to the, um, to the influence of Sanskrit, to the influence of uh, the kind of language that is spoken by social and political elites in the country, uh, in, in any region. Um, so, uh, uh, so this vocabulary that Sharad is trying to, um, you know, use uh, very interestingly. Um, uh, I find it, I find it, uh, uh, I think, a very kind of uh, um, a substantial contribution because the book is going to be a big uh, hit. And um, um, let me now talk, uh, let me now come to the substantial part that what is this all about? Um, Professor Patan interestingly pointed out the, uh, this do we an understanding the democratization of education. Um, this democratization of education has uh, enabled a uh, lot of us uh, who come from Uh, socially, economically underprivileged background, educationally. Because uh, educationally, we did not really inherit any, um, I mean, when, a, when the kind of region that we come from, the kind of families that we come from, we did not have the legacy of um, having had um, educated parents. So this democratization of education, um, as Dr. Ambedkar would put it, it was like um, Tiger Smith, Wagen is a book. So this, this access to English language, which he consciously um, uh, sought to utilize in order to seek education mobility is something which is extremely captivating. His struggle um, to Despite having failed 10 standard, he had failed 10 standard, I had failed 12 standard in the same subject. <laughs> so, uh, so that whole journey um, and how consciously he cultivated his, uh, his love and appreciation for the, uh, uh, for the English language is something which is deeply, um, uh, I mean, I just like, I deeply appreciate uh, and the way he put it, you know, uh, writing about these uh, these instances in a very captivating, in a very engaging manner is something um, which which um, uh, which is very very significant for me as as you know as a um, and I come from ethnographic. I have done a lot of ethnography and um, uh, I could I could see that engagement of Sharad's uh, with the kind of uh, minute observation that he's um, he's come out with. 
so this democratization of language it is not only democratization uh, the democratization of language that uh, um that enabled us to um, you know come to this stage but that inner strength uh that inner quest the realization of the inner quest is something which is which is very very important um and you know uh, we we had access to schools we had access to libraries we had access to uh, um you know to some extent books also but how to use how to exploit this access um you know to something which is extremely valued that is english language english language is you know speaking english um is another marker of differentiation in our society and coming from khandesh region where um, you know uh, of course there was a uh, the, uh, he talks about uh, jain college is one of the um, <clears throat> we we considered it as a very elitist place um, so many of us didn't really have access to those kind of educational systems we did uh, uh, you know so uh, but he consciously made an effort to go there and study and that's where is is his love for um, the english language uh, you know uh, prospered uh, and uh, the way he wrote uh, you know he he read those dictionaries he then consciously made an effort to overcome his uh, a lot of innovations and uh, you know fear for the english language which had ailed his earlier progress is is uh, you know as as they felt in standard uh, that part is something which um, uh, which is which is, i found it extremely fascinating uh, um is um, professor alvey also spoke about his uh, his his french and the and the manner he uh, you know basically he uh, developed his um you know his his uh, he learned uh, french language it's a basically a self taught um method you know he did not have a formal training later on he got formal training uh, because is you know the way he um, learned self language on his own while being in lucknow um so these are some of the fascinating areas but what is um, so the main the main um, uh, theme that i would like to come back again that this democratization language is not um, you know unless and until you consciously exploit you consciously partake in that process you would not have any um you know any any uh, marked change in your, your in your personality in your life you would not be able to change your socio economic existence i'm consciously using socio because um <clears throat> after you have gained economic mobility then obviously you socially get acceptance uh, and that is what has happened when we see um, the representation of uh, of the, of people from the marginalized sections now we have in jnu lots of you know uh, the number has gone up people who come from socio economically marginalized uh, sections and this is because of largely uh, because of the democratization of education and uh, and the manner in which we responded to this process uh, so so this book and probably many more of this kind uh, uh, would come in the near future resulted from this whole democrat democratization process um all those minute instances minute uh, you know um instances that is talked about um there is there is lot of you know um there is lot of anger also um uh, to the extent that um uh, if he felt snubbed by people at various points of time in his journey till today um, he was um Uh, he did not take it very lightly you know he immediately shot back so this uh, uh, you know this anger uh, is also against not those individuals but the but the system that these individuals have been produced by um so um so at times you you find this you know there is in the beginning of his life when he was growing up in that village uh, you know failing 10th standard uh there is a lot of um, you know uh, deprecating feeling um, um uh, but the later on as you progress along by reading the book you see a lot of self appreciation um and that self appreciation comes from 
some kind of um, uh, you know that uh, that I've, I've got something and I need to I need to take on this world. Um, there is a lot of um, um, his writing style is very easily accessible. Uh, sentences are quite short, uh, but at times you also see uh, excessive use of um, commas. Hmm? Probably I am not sure whether it is just self-conscious decision whether he did, uh, spoke to his um, editor or the publication company uh, because we as Naipaul, I remember he was extremely uh, cagey about uh, the kind of um, commas and um, uh, uh, what do you call it um, uh, colons and semicolons that he used. He was very careful about it and what one of his editors that don't change my uh, semicolons. It's something like that probably he but there is an excessive use of commas. So at times, sentences get, uh, um, you know, the kind of desired meaning. Of it. Basically, they kill the flow. Um, I'm not the student of literature, but uh, whatever little I read, uh, I, I'm talking from that point of view. You may not agree with me. We will sit together and uh, I'll also point out a couple of things from the book. Uh, so, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's also kind of, uh, probably it was also, um, apart from this uh, philosophical content, apart from the struggle, apart from this anger, apart from this this zeal to learn things, uh, you know, um, so deeply, so uh, you know uh, that you know, I just want to, uh, I just want to be something. You know, he had this 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 fire in his belly, but then immediately also descends into uh, some kind of self abnegation. That self-application part comes not from his own you know, understanding of the world, but also because of the kind of family that he comes. His mother's contribution, for example, his brother's um, struggle to deal. Um, um, what is that? Uh, struggle to deal with, uh, you know, life. Um, so all of this. Uh, he is constantly, you know, reminding himself of. He is not completely. He is he's going to the various parts of the world. Interestingly, I mean, Europe particularly, enjoying, you know, with his friends. Um, you know, very interesting, engaging company of young women, uh, which apparently, um, you know, uh, tends to appreciate a lot and very honestly talks about it. That is something which is very touchy. Um, and those. Um, uh, female companions that he met. I mean, he's, he's, um, he shares a very um, great deal of warmth with them and he also has a very great respect for them. You know, that is something which is very, very interesting again. Um, that sensitivity towards your fellow um, um, uh, women having come from such kind of background. Uh, so that the, the kind of the manner in which he has very consciously cultivated that, that, that sensibility uh, you know, of appreciation um, of fellow individuals, especially from the... Yes, uh, yes, hello. Hello. Ha, ha, ha. What is that? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Saitya unmuted his mic. It's okay. Oh. You can go ahead, Radhik. So, uh, you know, that, that sensibility and that, uh, that understanding, that warmth, uh, uh, that, that uh, uh, you know, um, he demonstrates, he shows, is something which is um, I find extremely uh, interesting, um, um, you know, uh, uh, and he also talks about uh, this instance in uh, um, in Lucknow where he meets this young woman Sonia and the way, you know, she while drinking water, uh, water falls on her and then he, um, uh, he gets into a very different kind of mood and also shares a very uh, interesting relationship which didn't last very long. Uh, similar thing about Nike, um, you know. Uh, so he has had this. Um, uh, he's had these difficult experiences, uh, uh, normally from which uh, I mean, uh, coming out of these uh, instances is very difficult. That that sensibility is is something which forms a very small part of his narrative, but but, um, but deeply interesting. You know, um, so um, so you have respect for your fellow um, uh, student, uh, but at the same time you also you, you know is is also ready to um, shoot back. It doesn't really take uh, anybody's condensation. So that is also so that 
uh, that it is not anger, but it is also, you know, the, the kind of confidence that he has gained over a period of time, that confidence comes from his deep engagement with the kind of reading that he did. So this book is, um, in that sense, um, um, a very interesting contribution to uh, to this, um, this to the struggle of people who come from a particular background. Uh, and this is, and he doesn't really, you know, he doesn't really, I mean, his narrative doesn't really give the sense of having stuck um, to the world that he is, he's come from. It is, there are, there are, there are values that can be universalized, universally shared. Um, that quest for education, for example, that, that hunger, that urge, that fire in his belly to achieve something, taking decision um, to go to Lucknow because he couldn't find hostel uh, in um, in Hyderabad. Uh, so he was willing to kind of let go of things in the sense that he wanted to go to Hyderabad because he thought that it is one of the best places to learn. But then he didn't find place. He didn't get disappointed. He overnight took the decision of going to Lucknow. If I were in his place, I would have probably not done that. Um, something very, you know, altogether very different, far, far away from his, uh, uh, you know, from his hometown. Um, then he also comes to Delhi. So the journey is very interesting. Uh, but what I continue to see this, and I, I'm sure it will continue for a while, as long as we are in this uh, field, this this love, this deep appreciation for knowledge, uh, knowledge, knowledge gaining, you know, this reading, for example. Um, so, um, so at time there is also a very, I mean, I don't know whether again, it is a conscious decision of, uh, there is some kind of Bollywoodization. Uh, in Lucknow, we narrate his experience, you know, there is this guy who hits him and then he, um, uh, you know, he, he just kind of um, he, he tries to get himself safe from the from the punch, but the punch landed on his ear, and then the ear trust starts bleeding, and then um, uh, you know, uh, then that that whole incident, uh, so the whole um, incident uh, attracts a lot of crowd, and then he's taken to hospital, things like that. All these little things, you know. Um, uh, so, uh, point out towards his assertiveness. You know, um, normally, uh, I mean, um, getting into a kind of brawl with local people, we tend to avoid. But then he was quite, uh, you know, willing to confront uh, these kind of characters. And these kind of characters he sees in France also. For example, there is this um, snobbish French guy who was trying to, um, uh, you know, uh, he, he was, he was he was trying to condescendingly talk uh, about uh, um, Sharad's um, French language. Um, so all these instances point out that uh, uh, he um, he, had, he had he had collected enormous amount of um, um, uh, kind of self confidence, but he was still on the ground. But I mean, immediately the next moment. Um, th this is something which is very interesting I found in the book and uh, whenever he achieves things, whenever he accomplishes things, he would immediately go back to his village and start talking about his brother's problem, his, you know, what his mother would be doing, how much amount of money she would be earning and he had received, um, uh, uh, you know, um, extremely prestigious scholarship, the amount of money. And then he would start thinking about his mother and start thinking about his uh, um, brother's uh, uh, problem. So um, from self-appreciation to self-depreciation. Uh, uh, I mean, deprecating and depreciation, these are two different words and I'm quite conscious using them. Uh, so you see this. So this constant going back to the, uh, uh, you know, to the root. Uh, to his roots, constantly remembering what his mother had taught him, what his mother had said to him. Um, so uh, that is, the, I don't know whether he consciously does it, because the book has been structured in a such a way 
structuring book consisting of 300 pages uh, and there is this engaging flow is not an easy thing to do so the book has been st structured so wonderfully well that you don't really you don't have to go back to uh, you know if you you don't really forget it it keeps you engaged with the narrative you don't have to go back to you know oh, what is this about then i didn't get it then let me revisit some pages i didn't really find in that i, mean, I didn't really find reading this book in that sense it is uh, you know uh, extremely engaging um, uh, 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 book uh, probably i uh, you know in one sitting probably or couple of sitting that i had read um, um, henry miller's um, topics of cancer that's the only book that i i i finished in a couple of sitting uh, sittings and of course camus uh, the outsider uh, then after that i don't really uh, uh, i don't really recall having great books uh, so uh, engagingly uh, bura was the one that i not because he comes from my region and i share ge geographical uh, commonalities uh, but because it's narrative um, it's very engaging and and the kind of humor that he used in the beginning for example it reminds me of this Wittgensteinian take on language. You know, um, this, uh, the definition of manager, he, he, it's, uh, he's, uh, he's hired as a manager in, 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 a, um, in Dhule, in a nearby place. Um, and what actually manager, the role of manager consists of, that is something when he goes on talking about, you know, sweeping that office, taking orders from his boss, organizing teas and things like that so but he was hired as a manager and you know when you look at the dictionary description of manager definition of manager it's it's you know it's it's uh, uh, that manager meaning you are um, enjoying a lot of power um, you are having a nice office to yourself you have people uh, um, to order to you don't take orders so in that i mean so all these his writing style is is this is very, very engaging. Um, um, so, in that sense, you know, I mean, Wittgenstein tells us uh, the meaning of the language is used. So, when you actually see a particular term being used, that is language for Wittgenstein. So, I, I I'm not, I'm, I, I don't really see um, uh, Sharad's uh, fascination or appreciation for Wittgenstein, uh, but for other people, Althusser, for example, uh, Derrida, these were the people that he wrote and read. Uh, Milan Kundera is another character who I uh, I love. Um, so, and uh, he also talks about that how these dictionary terms, the meaning that you find in dictionary are, when you use them on the ground, then you realize the kind of vacuity they have. They don't have these, these words don't have meat unless and until you actually see in the everyday discourse being used. Um, so, uh, so that I found in this book. So it's very, very interesting. And uh, uh, I briefly mentioned before I started talking, I mean, when I started talking about this book, that, you know, this, this book contributes certain vocabulary to the lexicon of Marathi language. Um, and these are the words that our mothers use, um, father, I mean, everybody uses, uh, not only mothers, but like, for example, Bakota, okay, Watta. He could have used the word Marathi word Ota, but he didn't use that. Uh, he didn't. He doesn't use use it. He used the word um, Watta, Watta, which is typically used in Iran. Then uh, you know, Butsko, crowd, Gardi. He could have said Gardi, but he doesn't use the word Gardi. He uses Butsko. Um, so uh, Butska is also a pejorative term to um, uh, to use to describe people who just gathered. You know, that kind of. Um, boisterous, uh, uh, present a boisterous instance. Um, Satu Bharmas, meaning basically one person who looks very emaciated. Um, you are you are very kind of bony, you know. So Satu Bharmas, um, Utana, these are all words that are used in Iran. There are people here who are, I think are the uh, um, uh, who are who are bit, I mean, uh, who are more equipped um, to comment on these? Dilip Chaman is one of them. Uh, of course, Ranganath sir. Uh, but this is what I, I noticed. Uh, so, uh, um, 
So these words, I I, I hope um, uh, gain currency in uh, you know in the kind of literary output we may see in the future from especially from Kandes region, um, because there is um, there is this language hegemony. There is this you know, and um, and you don't really see social elites um, using this kind of words. They, if you use this kind of words, then they they they, they kind of belittle your sense of understanding of um, of the language that is Marathi. Okay, so in Marathi, the certain kind of vocabulary also becomes uh, um, uh, uh, also becomes a tool to marginalize uh, certain kind of uh, people who come from certain kind of background, especially those who come from social economically marginalized background. Uh, so this conscious use um, of these vocabulary is something which which I I really liked. Um, so this, uh, I mean, overall, uh, it's a it's a fascinating it's a fascinating account of inner strength. Hmm? At times, you know, he also tends to be a bit. Uh, I mean, I would say um, uh, there is a bit of an excess of this inner strength. You know, um, um, I mean, uh, but I completely understand this excess use of um, I. You know, uh, that I snubbed that person. I engaged. I took on him. Um, so, uh, so there is a bit of an excess of that. Um, and I don't want to say that it could have been avoided, uh, but probably uh, another language device or tool could have been used to to express that. Hmm? Humor, humor is one of the best uh, uh, things. You know, if you really want to convey something about your own self. Um, you deprecate yourself at the same time you appreciate yourself. The appreciation is more here. But in the beginning, when he's talking about um, uh, his, uh, you know, uh, his, his, his life in, uh, in, in, in Dhule, you know, if, until he came to Jain, uh, there is a lot of, um, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's really harsh on himself. Hmm? But I think that is, that's a, I mean, it's it's not something that you choose to be. You react to the surrounding environment that makes you feel in a certain way. So this, uh, at times, you also sound a bit reactionary, and I have no qualms in accepting that. This reaction is a byproduct, or in fact, results from um, the way in which people treat you. Okay. So uh, therefore, I would um, um, I would not really um, um, I wouldn't really say, but yeah, he could have um, he could have perhaps controlled his uh, you know excessiveness in projecting himself. Um, um, but again, you know that that comes from the kind of um, um, uh, the, the the kind of denunciation, social denunciation that he uh, experienced. Um, so it's a, it's I think it's a natural progression. Um, I think over a period of time, uh, um, um, that'll uh, I hope that dissipates, um, uh, because we are uh, we share this uh, uh, this you know. We have to. We have to. Um, his 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 um, um, uh, his his prickly comments on uh, um, JNU's left politics is also quite. I think comes from that uh, um, that objective um, um, observation. Mm -hmm. And there is there is nothing wrong in um, uh, uh, you know uh, expressing that. Um, and he also, um, uh, uh, and despite having had such life, which could have turned him extremely bitter, he doesn't really bitter. He appreciates the individuals that helped him immensely. You know, he really fondly talks about them. Um, so uh, um, overall, Buddha is a um, it's a fascinating book, and. Uh, 
and I I hope that he gets translated so that uh, it goes beyond the confines of Marathi language. Um, and uh, Kandesh is a region from where you don't really see this kind of literary outputs. Um, we have um, um, Dulay is something, you know, we have we have had um, Comrade Sharad Patel, uh, Marxist intellectual, Ambedkar at Kulayat intellectual, philosopher who delivered lectures in 80s in JNU. Um, then we also have uh, Purushottam Patel, uh, uh, poet. Um, apart from that, I don't really, and of course, uh, there are people who are now our generation. Um, um, they're coming out with interesting, um, um, you know, literary engagements. Um, I, well, another, I mean, it's not a problem per se. I mean, it's a, um, the book could have been titled something else. Um, more that, you know, kind of um, talking about, of, of pointing out towards larger processes, um, exclusionary processes that he has experienced and gone through. Uh, the title Bura becomes a kind of, of course, it's an autobiography. Uh, and writing an autobiography at such an age uh, is, is, is literally wise, could be very risky. Uh, people don't really come out with at a very early uh, stages of their academic life or their literary life um, with uh, autobi autobiographical take. Um, so, it, does it mean that he's not going to write or it, does it mean that there is a second part, maybe after a few years time, we don't know. So um, if the book had, um, you know, uh, and then I, 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 don't, I don't really, he does talk about his um, Adivasi trends, Will. Um, we don't really see anything about um, uh, uh, OBC counterparts, Dalits, for example. Um, there could have been one or two pages uh, talking about the kind of caste hierarchy that his village had and, and, and how he, interact, he might have interacted. Uh, that part is also missing. He does talk about, I mean, he's been influenced by Ambedkar and Pule. Um, uh, but but uh, what existed on the ground when he was going up, um, the kind of politics, uh, he doesn't really talk about politics. Um, I mean, institutional politics in the sense about he doesn't really talk about political parties. Um, um, uh, but uh, one or two pages talking about, um, I mean, he does use the word uh, Dati Uttarand, caste hierarchy. Um, um, I think a little bit more could have been said. Um, on this part. Um, um, what else? Um, yeah, I mean, um, it is highly engaging book. I see, I immensely enjoy it. Um, I've, I've, I've read uh, up to chapter 51. And uh, chapters are quite, uh, uh, you know, comparatively small. So you just, and, and I think it's not about the length of the book or, um, you know, uh, it's short chapterization, but it's it's in its content, which is highly engaging. So therefore, once you start reading it, um, I look. I'm not saying that. I mean, I he comes from the same region as I do, and that's the reason that I found it highly engaging. But the content-wise, uh, there is there is humor there. You know, um, humorous snippets. So that that his style is his style is extremely engaging. Short sentences. Um, of course, there are longest sentences also, but there is this confluence of short and long sentences is something which I think one of the strengths of the book, apart from his um, highly engaging narrative. Um, so. Um, um, and uh, all these philosophical terms that he uses and the kind of lucid description that he gives in the next sentences. 
this is something which is uh, which is also um, um, very very interesting and uh, because it it informs readers as to what these terms are about. So that's a very good style. Um, and things are, uh, I mean, there's a great deal of clarity about the places that he has been to and visited. You know, as if one, one I, 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 I get the impression that uh, he was actually collecting or writing about while being there, thinking that I'm going to develop, I'm going to write a book about, 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 about my experiences, therefore I should start writing. You know, the, the amount of clarity that one sees from his narrative uh, 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 points out to that. But I'm not very sure. I, I don't think that, uh, of course, there's a politics of writing also that, you know, um, we have in anthropology the discussion that, uh, I mean, ethnographers after finishing field work, when they write, uh, is influenced by lots of um, uh, non uh, field work decisions, you know? So, um, um, but but that's a part. That's a part. Um, the book is highly um, engaging, um, unputdownable. That you often use this word when you see an appreciation of a book, and uh, and and um, I'm really glad that um, uh, my my neighbor has come out with this fascinating account, this highly engaging book, and therefore I congratulate him. And uh, uh, this is also faced in um, uh, Kesa, Bombil um, uh, party. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll very soon have a Bombil meal, um, Sharad. I still haven't really unpacked uh, that uh, bicycle um, uh, packet, I mean, this thing, that, that, that uh, container, kind of bag, huge bag. So uh, we'll sit and talk more about this. Um, uh, and this is what I mean. I have been. I got this book three days ago. I wish I could have gotten it. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe a week or ten days ago. I could have read it properly, probably, and could have come out with um, a more substantial. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, that's been a very uh, rich and enlightening uh, reading of the book and. Hopefully, you know, Sharad will answer all the queries that you pose to him. Um, and, uh, you know, Sharad, I dipped into the book. I read sections of the book that uh, I thought perhaps, uh, you know, would engage me. And I was particularly interested in the time that you spent in France on the Erasmus Fellowship and also your time at the Perpignan University. And... Uh, so on the one hand, you know, uh, your journey from a small village in Khandesh to uh, various universities, but I think it's also fascinating to actually read your journey to uh, Europe and to the various universities that are part of the Erasmus program. There was something that really struck me, which is that when you're talking actually about the baccalaureate program in schools, you talk about how philosophy is a subject that is taught at the school level because of which the capacity to think and the capacity to you know rationalize and also it manifest itself in culture and all other you know uh, whether it's the field of literature etc how how much importance you actually place on philosophy and the fact that it's something that you then now are deeply engaged with that was interesting to read and also the fact that the Erasmus program, uh, you know, the way you talk about how it was set up to uh, stop the kind of uh, post second, you know, what people had experienced in Europe during the second world war and how conflict can actually be resolved through dialogue, discussion and debate, which I think is something that we in the university uh, care very deeply about. And you talk about how that Erasmus program was geared towards that of bringing people who, you know, came from different linguistic and cultural backgrounds and then, you know, were able to engage in discussions uh, about the most profound things in the world, the most disturbing things in the world. So, uh, you know, thank you for writing this book. I'm sure it'll be translated. And now I think we'd like to hear from you about how this book uh, came into being. Uh, you were very clear that you did not 
want to call this an autobiography, but a first person account when I started talking to you about this. And you said that this is not an autobiography. This is a first person account of a journey that you made in search of social mobility, right? So maybe Sharad, you'd like to now respond to all the discussants. Uh, thank you. Am I audible? Just, just, just yes. hold on, Sharad. Before that, I mean, just want to say something uh, to JNU audience. Uh, there is a fantastic critique of JNU in this book. And it's really fascinating to read that critique because he uses the word from the test point of view, like from the uh, politically political neutrality point of view as a, as, a, uh, as a student and how he observed the politics of JNU. And then when he becomes a teacher, so how he closely watches the entire uh, politics. But what Sharad, Sharad misses in the book is that of the politics of interpretation that the JNU has hegemonized. And I hope he will write on that. Uh, if uh, I may, thank you all of you. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you all of you for being there. Actually, uh, first of all, let me thank JNU PA uh, for organizing this uh, unexpected event. Unexpected because I thought that uh, I had no idea that there could be a discussion on a book written in Marathi, frankly speaking. And for that, I uh, thank uh, Satyabrata Das and uh, Professor Shukla Taman, who immediately floated this idea that let us have this JNUTA outreach program and have a book discussion. And JNUTA took up this idea and uh, I'm, I'm really, really grateful. Uh, uh, and equally grateful to the discussion to who, uh, who accepted the invitation on such a short notice that, you know, like Professor Aloni was not well. Uh, 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 my dear friend Shinde was in Mumbai, but he they instantly accepted this invitation and uh, special words to uh, uh, Pathare sir, who has been actually extremely generous. In fact, that uh, he is a, he is a his big name in Marathi literature, but he went out of his way to, to call me to get my number from the publisher. And, uh, can you uh, unmute some people there? I'll, I'll mute. Actually, it is a bit of I'm muted. Yes. I'm muted. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rangnath Patare, sir, actually, uh, he went out of his way to uh, ask the publisher to uh, you know, give him my number. And so, frankly, he called me and conveys his, uh, his, what he felt after reading the book. And that's something that touched me deeply, actually. Uh, so my, uh, my gratitude, actually. Actually, ever since the uh, launch, uh, the release of the book, uh, it's been very, very overwhelming for me to receive a, a range of comments. And these comments are not just, the range is so vast and heterogeneous and at times contradictory also to some degree uh, and understandable because and here, uh, when I'm talking about my book, I made it very clear to Professor Shukla Samand in the morning that uh, I would refrain from talking what I have written in the book uh, rather, I would uh, talk about how I wrote it and why I wrote it. Because what I wrote it, if I try to uh, talk myself, then it would constitute as if I'm an overarching authority trying to uh, control the semantics of the book. Whereas people would read the book from their own perspective. And uh, I mean, I, I respect the, the fact that my book is in the public domain, in the public sphere, and the reader is sovereign to understand uh, whatever she or he may find. So I would not actually try to kind of uh, validate a set of comments and invalidate uh, the other set. That would be very unfair, actually. So that's why I would not try to comment uh, what exactly, because if, as if it's not a thesis, it's a, it's a non-rational writing. When I say non-rational, it doesn't mean irrational, but there are spaces where it is ambiguous. As Pradeep pointed out that I could have been this, I could have been that, but I'm a human being and the way my feelings were there at those points, I should write the way I behave. Why should I sanitize that? A posteriori, I might think that, oh, but it, it might project me as a negative person or as a reactionary person, when that would be inauthentic, actually. That would not be authentic account. So wherever, like, uh, when there is an incident, the way I approach the interview in Amity, and actually this a proofreader said, actually, you come across it as a bit, bit negative. I said, then I'm not a very saint. I mean, I, I, I behave like that in that uh, situation. That's how I behave. So why would I sanitize that? 
because that that would amount to the only ethics that I have followed in writing this book is authenticity. Uh, I'm not speaking on behalf behalf of anybody or any community uh, to kind of. Of course, I'm getting a very different comments that you know we relate, and I that I feel very touched when people say that I'm relating with your account and with this and that. That is something I feel touched, but at the same time, I maintain the fact that I'm not speaking on behalf of anybody. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. And at the same time, that myself is uh, how much is accessible to me is a question of debate. Uh, so that myself is, uh, is not very, very transparent to me. I mean, uh, whatever I understand of the, the, the nature of ourselves, uh, I don't think that, uh, that, that myself is so accessible to me. So in whatever manner I have understood, uh, I have written. Uh, so uh, having said that, I would refrain from talking about what I have written, but rather I would uh, talk about how I written and why I have written. So actually, uh, like there are kind of different different modes of writing about the self, and like you know, uh, lamentation, denunciation. And lamentation has its legitimacy. Denunciation has its le legitimacy. I'm not discrediting uh, any of these modes because it depends on uh, our lived experience. So, uh, first of all, uh, it would have been very, very uh, contrary to my notion of self-respect and dignity to get into merely lamentation mode and denunciation mode. Uh, that that I would have found self-defeating. So, uh, what I have done is that I have tr tried to go beyond lamentation, denunciation, and try to look at the situations that I have lived through uh, the, the category of comprehension. I have tried to comprehend because someone who is 40 years old and there is a surplus time he gets because of COVID situation, and there's a particular framework in which I find myself, and then uh, a series of situations that, that inundate my mind, series of situations, series of situations that I lived. And as many, uh, uh, Pradeep is not the first person to talk about the title, uh, Bhura, but there is a reason for that, actually. The reason is that I left my village in uh, 98, 97, 98. And for 20 years almost, I think very rarely I've been to my village. Uh, I mean, I've been very ra rarely to Dhule itself in the first place where my, uh, my family is there. But uh, for like first three years, I didn't go to visit my uh, family also. So, and all of a sudden in 2018, my villagers decided to uh, kind of you know organize a program ki satkar kiya jaye uska and i was a bit surprised I mean, for 20 years i mean these people were not uh, kind of matlab hamare gaon mein koi kushti bhi jeet jata hai to usko pura uska usko ghumate hain maine kaha inko ab kya hua so but anyway i thought that if i can interact with students i didn't mind that invitation i went to my village and in that uh, program the uh, the senior citizens of my village who have seen me uh, growing up uh, in my childhood, in their speeches, they use the word Bhura. Bhura is my name used in my village, which was not in usage for almost 20 years. Uh, because my, my mother, my family, nobody uses that word Bhura, but only in my village, people used to use this word Bhura. And in that program, when that <clears throat> Shuram Anna, he used the word Bhura, and that word, Ari, that's my name. And for 20 years, I, I had kind of almost kind of, it was not in usage. So that was a signifier triggered a series of my childhood memories and most of were not very happy memories. So Bhura is that kind of a world which I tried to kind of, you know, push in the, uh, uh, in the backdrop because I was not very comfortable with that. So when I'm using this word Bhura, it has that background actually. Uh, that's the world uh, of my mother, of my village uh, from which I was trying to run away. Uh, I mean, it was a psychologically difficult thing for me because the lifestyle that I'm enjoying or I'm having in JNU is so different from the lifestyle that I had. And there was a disconnect. And so when this gentleman, this elderly, uh, 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 my villager used this word Bhura, that time I had this idea that I'm going to write a book. But I didn't know that I would write a book when I'm 40 years old. I had this idea that at some point I would write a book. Uh, so if... I wrote this book at this point of time, it's sheer accident. And I think uh, Professor Dilip Chawan, he's there. He's the one who kind of made me write all these things. Because what happened in uh, last year, when uh, uh, due to COVID situation, uh, we uh, stopped all our uh, normal operations, our activities. 
so i started using social media and started writing in marathi for 20 years i was not in touch with marathi literature uh, i was not reading that much marathi so i was not very confident of my raswa dirga forget about punctuation pradeep i didn't know i mean I knew but i was not very confident of raswa kaha pe aata hai dirga kaha pe aata hai jaise aa waise maine phone pe pura kitab likha hai theek hai to raswa dirga fir baad mein there was negotiation between the publisher if you see my first manuscript there is hardly any punctuation actually <laughs> <laughs> so but this is sir pramana bhasha so i negotiated almost 99% let us say but then i can't be so i'm not really milan kundera or let's say bs naipol maine kaha yaar chalo theek hai aapka 1% 5% to manna padega to punctuation unne dala aisa samajh lo theek hai so that is the story like last year i happened to write one and half page souvenir a memory uh, of my uh, stay in paris one and half page and not with the intention objective of writing a book and it took off in social media it went so viral that i started receiving message that ki hum iska to samuhik vachan kar rahe hain matlab reading we are doing collectively people started reading that way and then uh, professor dilip chavan called me and said you know what he told me that you know what you continue writing this thing i said okay uh, then i was very confident in the beginning but i started writing and first 50 odd pages i released on social media and they went very viral and then one after another i started getting uh, 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 this uh, uh, publications uh, calls for publication uh, and then a serious publication house like lok wang mai grew approached me tab mujhe laga are sach mein kuch serious hi likh raha honga fir mai to mujhe nahi pata tha ki I, i thought that i'm just writing and i was in the beginning thinking i, I thought of releasing all the pages in social media koi matlab then they said no no don't release uh, i mean from from the point of view of our uh, business also it's not very good so then after a point i stopped releasing those pages and uh, so the, the the first half and half one and half page that i wrote that is actually on page number 248 and 249 <laughs> see for example it was not that oh the first page is going to be the first page that i wrote the first page that i wrote on social media uh, that happens to be in the book uh, that that incident is there on page number 2848 and 249 so and then uh, then i then slowly gradually i started uh, conceptualizing the structure uh, and like you know i said to tell you that uh, there is a range of comments that i am getting like comment that i got from a veteran and seasoned uh, journalist like kumar ketkar uh, that he said that what is uh, you know interesting about your book is that it does describe social and personal trauma without get, without de- degenerating into any melodrama and what he liked about the book is that there are kind of you know uh, in the first part of the book there are a number of philosophical convulsions uh, but those philosophical musings are very less and less in the second part and he advised or recommended or suggested that if i i redo the book uh, i should go for those philosophical musings in the second part also so he is also kind of a, a, a very seasoned reader and in the morning i got some other comment where the person thought that this philosophical musings musings could be minimized to let the uh, the, the just the description uh, to come forward so i mean from my point of view both comments and suggestions suggestions are valid though they might seem to contradict each other so like different different suggestions like i have written this uh, 354 pages in two and a half months and in that particular framework i have written on the phone uh, i have typed i have not written actually i have used this uh, this phone and i have typed uh, five drafts so total uh, 1500 uh, pages uh, on this and i release it to fir mujhe when i was uh, releasing these pages on social media then aapko iske upar itna sanskar karna padega aapko iske upar ye karna padega i said okay wo publisher or proofreader karenge but then sanskar and uh, uh, this editing part it is uh, if I, when i understand it from the point of view of my one of my disciplines that is social linguistics these are social linguistic issues rather than linguistic issues like you know just to give you one in, uh, example a proofreader was in the first uh, suggestion he was giving uh, uh, synonyms praman bhashay ke jo matlab marathi synonyms for irani words bracket mein to maine kaha and then he called back so do you mind if you give like i have used the word kurchi in irani kurchi me shirt uh, then he was he used to give in bracket all these words for irani 
Then I asked him, why are you doing that? He said that uh, Praman Bhasha ke jo uh, reader hai, wo samjhenge ni Pune Mumbai ke. Maine ka to fir maine aage jaakar Italian bhi use kiya hai, French bhi use kiya hai, ke French Marathi hamare Praman Bhasha ka jo speaker hai, wo French uh, Italian boli jaati hai kya ghar pe? Waha pe kya unhi diya apne bracket mein? Irani koi kya diya? To maine ka is social linguistic problem lag raha hai mujhe. So to a great extent, I negotiated the structure. I said that don't do syntactic changes. Don't do, uh, uh, don't suggest synonyms for the words that I have used. Max, you can do that. Punctuation mark, aap karo. Utna to aap kar sakte hai. That's your, I mean, there's, it's a site of negotiation. The politics of publication is also a site of negotiations. We can't, I mean, we are not, as I told that we are Snipal or Milan Kundera to call this, all the shots. So punctuation, raswa dirgam and aap kar sakte. That much I think, uh, uh, I think I, I have uh, considered. So uh, actually that's how I'm, uh, for JNU people or maybe for uh, Lok Wang Mai Druha, uh, they were, I mean, they were interested in the book uh, uh, in itself, but as this book is dealing with my academic journey uh, or academic mobility and uh, of which good uh, 15, 17 years, they revolve around JNU. So I'm also chronicling uh, JNU as a university. I witness experience as a student uh, how I witnessed uh, and how it, I experienced it as an instrument of social justice in whatever manner it may be, but it allowed me to uh, study, to cultivate myself. And then it was the launching pad for me so I could go abroad. And again, it, it allowed me to get back. So as that, there are three different genuines that I have narrated in this book. Uh, JNU, as, as a student, I, I experienced as an instrument of social change, social transformation in whatever limited uh, uh, degree it may be. I'm not saying that it's absolutely or... Uh, so I'm, I have tried this black and white uh, narratives. And then second, JNU, that post-16, nine uh, post uh, 16, like February 16 incident. What kind of JNU that then uh, it was projected, demonized, uh, using uh, all these uh, WhatsApp universities and uh, Godi media. So that JNU, uh, as a faculty, I have uh, chronicled that also. And then third kind of JNU, that is, which is kind of uh, in making, like what this gentleman is doing to JNU. And as a teacher and as also an executive council, council member, I have kind of seen that, you know, what is being done to JNU. Uh, so so the, the, some uh, uh, hundred odd pages are about JNU. Uh, and and different different layers and different different nuances different different shades of JNU uh, and there is not one single shade or there is not one single narrative and how these competing narratives exist coexist and how these competing narratives didn't lead to violence till 2016 what was the reason that there were so competing narratives uh, debate culture and all that but it didn't lead to violence and then uh, it it it. Uh, ends with that uh, uh, January 5th uh, attack on JNU. Uh, that's why uh, one of my friends said that, but it, it, it stops abruptly. I said, yes, it, it does stop ab abruptly because that's where uh, the uh, COVID situation starts. And then I get this surplus time uh, and I start uh, writing. Where's the uh, can we meet? Yeah, I will. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, because precisely at that point, after this JNU attack incident, there was a COVID situation and abruptly I get a surplus time and I start uh, kind of, you know, getting, withdrawing myself in that space where all this, my uh, childhood memories of uh, uh, the world of Vura, actually, uh, I have used this uh, when I clear my 10 plus two, and then I have used that, uh, I saw him going because that is the world that I hated. That is the world that I wanted to escape. So that is, I mean, many people thought that he, uh, it's not a, it's not an academic treatise to kind of, you know, give everything in the title. That also I feel there was a reason, there was a context and uh, because of which uh, I think I have given that name because uh, as uh, if you have read that situation in Sheffield that, you know, I, I used to have nightmares and uh, how, what I used to do in order to, uh, in order to kind of get rid of those nightmares. So. Uh, I was kind of Marathi me mein usko use kiya hai ki bhura ka bhoot jo haunt karta tha mujhe aur bhoot ka se jo aata tha usko wapas bhejne ki main koshish karta tha to Marathi me jo maine likha hai to so I mean now uh, that is what I have thought what I have written uh, 
uh, in those two and a half months. So uh, I'm I'm very overwhelmed, and I find that uh, most of uh, uh, most of those who are reading it uh, and they have been extremely generous, and and actually this overwhelming feeling is something at times very crushing also. Uh, so I hope that uh, I have uh, uh, answered some of the queries, and uh, I would uh, like to have uh, uh, you know if there is any question regarding how and why rather than what. Because I don't think I would be able to answer what. What would be something that I would refrain from talking about? So, if the audience members have questions, please uh, either type them into the chat box or you can raise your hands and we'll get Sharad to respond. So, Moshmi, yes, go ahead. Sharad, I'm uh, intrigued. Why did you uh, write the book on the phone? That's my big question. <laughs> why not a pen and paper or a, a laptop? Why the phone? <laughs> there is also a reason for that. Because you know what happens mostly, this phone I can I have a huge back problem and I can't sit in my uh, seat for let's say more than 30 minutes. And then I start having these back issues. Uh, and the thing is that you can go and sit somewhere, you can continue typing. Uh, and I forgot to write it. I actually... I'm not in that mode of I that it's actually excellent way of relating ourselves with the pen, but uh, I got used to it because I started typing uh, Facebook posts uh, on phone, and that Marathi came because uh, towards the end I make it very clear that you know since I was not very confident of my Marathi, so I have said that Atmanitlya Marathi Atmani Lilela ahe, and uh, somewhere I, I I am critical of the word autobiography though it's conventionally used that. But uh, I think I have not uh, uh, included things that I might have, kind of, I have lived or uh, um, I may not have a, a, a relative comprehension of those things uh, and or those things may be kind of, you know, uh, object of uh, my, uh, my literary work, purely literary work, fictional work. So uh, these are the things that are uh, around, constructed around my academic mobility, my academic journey. I don't see any questions in the chat box, but if anyone has any questions, please uh, unmute yourselves. And uh, I can see Sharad twisting and turning. Your back, I hope, is fine. Uh, we've been at it for an hour and a half, but uh, if there are questions, I'm sure Sir Sharad would be happy to respond or comments. Yeah, there are a couple. So there's a question for you uh, from Professor Kamala, from I guess. Professor Kamala, can you explain the nuances of the title? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, Bhura literally means that my mother thought that uh, uh, I am relatively fair when I was born. <laughs> and but then uh, there were three ways of uh, uh, three ways uh, uh, in which people used to use this word when I was in my village. Uh, those people who had absolutely kind of, you know, they would look at human beings not in terms of human uh, uniqueness or individuality, but in terms of in which caste you're born, uh, how much land you got, how much big, how big house you got. Uh, when you are reduced to those things, they would call me a bhuria. Okay. And there would be few people who would call me bhura. And there were two, three people in my village who would call me bhura master because they used to think Are, he's very... Uh, very, very uh, sharp in the school. So these things and Bura, this, as I explained uh, in 2018, that elderly gentleman used uh, in his speech uh, in that program. And that was a signifier triggering a series of memories in my mind. And I thought that, yeah, that's the world I think I should, I should write about. And that is, and did I answer your question? So, you know, I mean, this is the complication because when I was trying to ask my mother, you know, because bhura, I mean, also means powdered sugar. And uh, so just the fact that there is no standard Marathi and school children in Maharashtra and rural communities don't just fail in English, they actually fail in Marathi <laughs> because they do not and speak or write standard Marathi. So, you know, this is, uh, this is precisely what you've been really uh, trying to handle in your book about the linguistic diversity. Um, 
PR. Yeah. Is there any question? Uh, there are, are there any questions? Please go ahead and please feel free to uh, unmute yourselves and ask uh, or comment. <laughs> Uh, here is I am Anil. Can I speak? Ah, Anil. Some words. Anil ji, batayiye. I type kar raha tha, lekin mujhe laya ki mujhe bol dena chahiye. So it was a wonderful meeting with Bura and Sharad together. Haan, dono ko saath saath mila paya. Aur jab hum log evening walk pe nikalte hain, to dono se mulaqat hoti hai. Kabi Bura se, kabi Sharad se. और उन दोनों का आपस में इंटरेक्शन और उस इंटरेक्शन के बाद जो व्यक्ति सामने आता है टुगेदर भूरा एंड शरद टुगेदर उसके साथ फिर मिलना जो होता है बातचीत जो होती है उससे बहुत कुछ जानने को मिलता है समझने को मिलता है तो जो आपकी पुस्तक है यद्यपि मैं मराठी नहीं जानता और हमारी बातचीत हुई है और और फेसबुक पे और व्हाट्सएप पे ट्रांसलेशंस में हमने आपकी जर्नी को जाना है तो निसंदेह वो जो सेंसिबिलिटीज हैं वो रिमार्केबल हैं वो आसान नहीं होता है हर चीज को बहुत सेंसिटिविटी से देखना उसे सोशल और पॉलिटिकल फिलॉसफी के नजरिए से देखना उसे याद रख पाना एक कंटेक्स्ट में रख पाना और उसके बाद उसे रीडर्स के सामने प्रेजेंट कर पाना ये अपने आप में आ, बहुत कोशिश के बाद होता है और कोशिश लगातार डिस्कशंस में इंगेज रहने के बाद वो कोशिश सफल होती है और जिस तरह आप विभिन्न विचारों और विभिन्न विचारधाराओं के साथ इंगेज करते हैं अपने आप को न्यूट्रलिटी के साथ और उसके बाद भूरा के नजरिए से और शरद के नजरिए से दोनों के नजरिए से उसका विश्लेषण करने के बाद एक एक निष्कर्ष पे पहुंचते हैं वो वास्तव में बहुत ही सराहनीय है और जिसका हमें बहुत अच्छे उदाहरण के तौर पे आपने पुस्तक हमें दी है तो मैं बहुत बधाई देता हूं आपको और उम्मीद करता हूं कि यह पुस्तक एक लाइट की तरह काम करेगी एक प्रकाश की तरह काम करेगी या लाइट हाउस की तरह काम करेगी उन स्टूडेंट्स को जो रूरल एरियाज में बड़े सपने देखते हैं लेकिन कई बार उनको वो कहीं लाइट दिखाई नहीं देती कि वो कैसे आगे बढ़ें तो मैं ये मानता हूं कि महाराष्ट्र और मराठी स्पीकिंग समाज में ही नहीं बल्कि क्योंकि मुझे पता है कि आप इसको हिंदी और अंग्रेजी और अन्य भाषाओं में भी लाना चाहेंगे पब्लिशर भी चाहेंगे क्योंकि इसका जो इंगेजमेंट है वो भाषाओं के इतर है भाषाओं के परे है किसी भी भाषा में ये पुस्तक लिखी जाए तो ये व्यक्तियों को इंगेज कर लेगी क्योंकि मनुष्य को जो संघर्ष मनुष्य बनाता है उसको आपने बहुत सुंदरता से इसमें प्रस्तुत किया है तो पुनः आपको बहुत बधाई और बहुत धन्यवाद ये किताब सामने लाने के लिए थैंक यू नमस्कार शरद जी हाँ नमस्कार नमस्कार uh sir i am vilas vaiskar from aurangabad i have a question please so, sir uh, i have gone through the book and i don't find much use of high sounding adjectives embellished language but still the content of the book is so strong the content of the book is so absorbing that it, it it's it, it's always like a it seems like a magnet it has a magnetic power is it because of the blend of philosophy your ideology your lived experience that has lent more meaning to the words sir uh, see i mean there is one more i will combine your question with there is a question in the chat box uh, what is your intention behind writing this book uh, yeah. these both questions seem to be uh, more or less uh, the same kind see uh, if i say that no no i had no objective or intention that would be half truth and if i say that no there is absolutely some uh, some uh, explicit objectives that is also half truth actually first uh, uh, first thing that made me write it is uh, impersonal in the sense no it is it is absolutely personal in the sense that i wanted to take this uh, conflicting uh, situations within me out that is very personal reason 
second thing i know the for the time being barring a few readers uh, most for most of the reader the talking point is the surface narrative ki ek chhota gaon mein se aata hai bahar europe mein padh ke jata hai aur abhi jain mein padha raha hai this is what i call surface narrative and the surface narrative is going to be uh, the general point of talking uh, but more than that there are kind of socio political philosophical cultural there are these uh, narratives which were more important to me than the surface narrative and this is uh, i would attribute everything to education education in the sense because i made very clear when i was in my village uh, like any anybody who is born in uh, kunbi i didn't see caste system and why would i say that ki i had that consciousness ki caste bahut kharab cheez hai mujhe gaon mein bhi pata tha to this would not be true uh, because if i understood that of course mm-hmm. lived experience once i left my village uh and then education in a very uh, noble liberating and democratic sense of the term rather than a domestic sense of the term so these narratives or this uh, my attempt to remain stoic towards my own life experience i don't know to what extent i have succeeded only uh, a very uh, veteran season readers would be able to tell me is i think maybe uh, my training or my engagement with uh, how i looked at education as something not an instrument to get something but as an instrument to constitute myself differently than my point of departure because my point of departure cannot be my point of arrival and education has that uh, that task to constitute me differently and that difference is permanent difference rather than just uh, point of arrival and point of uh, point of de- departure and point of arrival too it's not in black and white it's a permanent that constituting differently all the time and when you get that sense of education i think then you try to look at every situation in that manner and i think that's what i have done primarily in the book uh, i mean there were situations had i included those situation narrative could have become slightly melodramatic but that was not my intention my intention was that okay this is more or less uh, that uh, life of deprivation life of uh, uh, poverty uh, uh, overwhelming number of our uh, uh, citizens they go through uh, and then denouncing it's like we have the legitimate right but then i wanted to arrive on that plane of comprehension and that is where i have i have spent more time actually uh, did i answer your question yes sir yes sir so are there more questions in the chat box i don't uh... see any and if there are questions from the audience members maybe we could take one more question and if there aren't any more questions coming then sharath uh, once again congratulations for your book we hope to see it translated into many languages and i'm sure there will be more books written on the mobile phone that will find uh, a new life as uh, a printed book Uh, so, Sharad, Sharad, congratulations and thanks for including many of us in your book. <laughs> <laughs> only, only those who understand Marathi would know who is included and <laughs> in what manner they are included. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Uh, organically included. Ah, uh, the, the situation demands then uh, because this book is also talking about those people who are around and uh, and before writing about them, it's what it was an ethical call to ask them. uh that this is what i have experienced what do you have to say about it uh i mean that is an ethic i cannot include anybody without asking yes. <laughs> thank you so thank, thank you. you again and thank you to all the discussants uh pathari ji has left i think but uh we will write to him and convey our thanks uh thank you pradeep for reading the book and in such a short time giving such insightful comments and alone thank you again for reading the book sharad thank you very much thank you thank you mm. good okay bye bye bye